Bandom, how's it going? Today we are going to go over some of the best image comics that are on the stand right now. You guys have been asking me for this video for a while, so let's get into it and let's see if we can find some new stuff for you. So as a prerequisite, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, we are not going to be looking at Saga or Sex Criminals. Not that those books aren't great. In fact, they are some of the best books that are out on the stands. It's just that I feel those books have kind of been put into more of a huge spotlight that everybody pretty much already knows about them that if I were to cover them here, they're like, okay, we know about this, let's just skip ahead. The first book on my list has to be, has to be Southern Bastards. Southern Bastards is easily the best book that's out on the stands right now from Marvel, DC, it's in my opinion the best thing that is out right now. And eight issues in, it is fantastic. Southern Bastards basically tells the story of Earl Tubbs, and Earl Tubbs has come back after burying his father and taking over his old man's house. And he sees that the town that he's come back to is being run by this evil co coach, uh, coach boss. Now, if you've ever seen the movie Walking Tall, this is essentially this, because Earl Tubbs walks around with a big stick around town, and eventually he does confront the coach. And let's just say the way that the fight ends was one of the most shocking moments that I have ever ever read in me reading comics in a very long time that just left me going what ah! written by Jason Aaron art by Jason Latour two guys right now that are at the top of their game in my opinion Jason Aaron has done things like scalped he's been writing Wolverine and the X-Men he's been doing great work I love the guy's stuff and Jason Latour if you don't know who he is he's mostly known actually for his writing if you've read Spider-Gwen it's the same guy that's writing Spider-Gwen. He's doing the art on this, and the art on this just fits the tone so well. It's just smoky and barbecue-y. It just fits that southern style flavor. It's just, oh, gritty and nasty. It's so great. I love this book. The next book on my list is coming from a guy that I'm telling you right now, he's going to be one of those guys that you are going to need to watch out for in the industry because he's been cutting his teeth for a while, and he's blown up. And I am talking about Nailbiter, written by Joshua Williams. Nailbiter tells the story of Buckaroo, Oregon. And Buckaroo, Oregon is home to the most notorious serial killers in the world. 16 serial killers have been born and raised in this town. And what ends up happening is this, this FBI investigator suddenly goes missing when he's investigating a sudden rash of more killings. Now, because he goes missing, an NSA investigator comes into the town and he's like, Hey, I'm trying to figure out what's going on, what's happening with all these killings. Along the way, he has to team up with the Nailbiter serial killer who, you haven't figured it out, he kills people and... But it is one of the best horror stories that is on the stands right now. And if this premise sounds familiar to you, maybe something from like the Hannibal TV show, Joshua Williamson is very much aware of that and he plays with your expectations in it because even the serial killers sometimes say, oh, what do you think this is, a movie? This isn't going to play out like this way because when you think something is going a certain way, it doesn't go that way. And that, to me, is the sign of very smart writing because he knows the tropes, he avoids the pitfalls, and he does a great job. And the art on this is great. If you are not reading Nailbiter and you are a fan of horror stories, such as Hannibal or Silence of the Lambs, things like that, you are missing out on one of the best horror books on the stands right now. Joshua Williamson, I am telling you right now, I'm calling it, this guy is one of the best guys in the industry, and I am excited to see what he comes up with next. The next one on my list is Morning Glories. Morning Glories is an awesome book that if you aren't reading right now and you are a fan of Lost, you're kind of doing yourself a disservice. And Morning Glories basically centers around this group of kids that get sent to this academy. Now, if they got sent willingly or not, that's up to you to find out because what ends up happening is that the story kind of plays with time a little bit because it flashes back, it flashes forward. You get a sense of what these kids were like before they came to this academy. Some of them had some troubled past. Some of them had some very, 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 very dark and troubled past. Others grew up in a very, you know, typical suburban home and they got sent to this academy. Some of them maybe or may have not been destined to be, come to this academy. And what ends up happening in this academy is that things start going mysteriously wrong. You've got kind of like ghosts that start showing up, time travel that happens. It's really cool. It's a really awesome story. And like I said, if you are a fan of Lost and you are not reading this, you are missing out on something really cool here. I do hope that Nick Spencer sticks the landing. We're about, if I'm not mistaken, close to 40 issues, if not even more, into this story. And he's just kind of started to let out the answers a little bit more of what's going on exactly at the Academy. It's a really fun read, and I have a blast every single time I pick it up. Next up on my list is Alex Placeda. Alex Placeda is a fantastic love story that deals with the concept of androids and love. Stop, you've probably heard this a million times. You're like, okay, well, you know, I saw her, I saw all those other movies that deal with this, but Alex Placeda is actually a very genuinely good read, and I'm 
really digging it all the way through. The start of the story centers around this guy named Alex, and Alex, he's not necessarily in the best shape of his life. You know, he's kind of slubby, he's going through everyday motions, he just went through a really nasty breakup, and you see it kind of reflected in the panels because his whole life is just plain. You know, he goes to work, goes to sleep, goes through it the motions every single time. And what ends up happening is that his grandmother, who is very much wealthy, buys him an android. At first, Alex is kind of creeped out about the android. He calls her Ada, you know, he's trying to figure out, well, it's kind of weird, some of these people are crazy with them. You know, the, there was a few years ago where there was an android incident where a, an android malfunctioned and killed a bunch of people, so now it's illegal to kind of hack into them and jailbreak them as the story goes along. Eventually, Alex decides to jailbreak Ada. Now, unfortunately, he does this, but it is illegal in this world, and because he jailbreaks her, the government ends up hunting them down. And by jailbreaking in this universe, what it essentially means is that he wakes up her consciousness. He gives her free choice. It's an awesome story. It really is. If you are a fan of kind of these maybe Blade Runner-esque, her type stories, you are going to love this book and you should definitely be reading this right now. The last book on my list is actually written by Robert Kirkman and I'm going to say it is Invincible. Invincible is the best superhero book on the stands right now. Robert Kirkman really does play with your expectations on how a superhero story goes. Beautiful art by Ryan Otley, and it gets brutal at times. Seriously, this is a very dark book. It is not intended for young readers, despite how you may feel after reading the first three or four trades. Get through those trades. The first three or four trades, it was kind of like Robert Kirkman was kind of finding his way. You know, he was playing around with expectations. You're introduced to the character Mark Grayson, who his dad's a superhero. He's just kind of gotten into his powers. Mark is dealing with hitting puberty and all that stuff. It's really a great story all around. And I think the best part about this is that you get to see Mark mature in his superheroing and in his life. This is actually what they did with Peter Parker before they retconned the marriage. You actually get to see him get married, have a kid, deal with loss, deal with people dying around him. It is a great story with tons of consequence. And I love Invincible, really. Again, I stress this enough. You're probably going to read the first three, four trades and think it's not that dark. It gets dark. It gets very dark and it gets very brutal. That's my list. I was mainly focusing on books that maybe you've seen them on the shelf and you're like, eh, you know, I'd like to try that someday. Or you've never heard of them. You know, there are tons of great Image books right now. I personally think Image is the best publisher on the stands right now. It's also the most important publisher on the stands because they're putting out the most original content, the most brilliant stories, and the best creators are at Image right now bar none. Over anything else, Image definitely has the best writers and artists in my opinion. And there are just tons and tons of books. And I've even, I haven't even covered some of the other best books that are out there. Lazarus, like I said earlier, Sex Criminals. There's just so much great variety in what they have right now. If this is your first time checking out my channel, I do weekly reviews of trade paperbacks, hardcovers, special editions. I do videos like this all the time. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. That is the best way to get a hold of me. I love hearing back from you. And if you have a favorite image title, what is it? Please let me know in the comments section. I love hearing back from you guys. You guys are awesome.